Hello everybody and thank you so much for joining me here at PlatformCon 2022. My name is Anis Ulis and this talk is about incorporating security into platform engineering. The do's and don'ts. Now before we get started, I want to ask you a simple question. What comes to mind when you're thinking about security? Usually when I ask people about the kind of tools they're using, their security related processes, people get highly uncomfortable. So when you're thinking about security, usually the following comes up or similar. People don't know where to start and why they should start. Why is it my job? Maybe they have a specific security team within their organization. Well, it's their job. It's not me who's supposed to look into that, right? Or people will tell me maybe, well, we do look into vulnerabilities. We do scan our workloads, but at the end of our sprint. Or they would tell me, well, I look into those security related tools, but they are really complicated to use. Not the best UX. It's not meant, it's not meant to be for me. Or people would tell me, well, yeah, I do scan my workloads, but there are so many vulnerabilities that come up from the scanning tools. I experience vulnerability fatigue. I don't want to look at it anymore. And those are all valid concerns <laughs> and valid problems. Now in this talk, I want to show you why you should get started with security scanning tools, how you can get started with them, when you would get started, who should get started, and with what you should get started when you get started with security scanning tools. Now, what are the available tools? I will focus specifically on Trivi. Trivi is an Aqua security open source tool. It's hosted within our GitHub account. It's completely open source. You don't even have to sign up with your email. Then I will go into the do's and don'ts of incorporating security scanning tools such as Trivi into your platform engineering. And then we'll show a little hands-on demo. Now, who am I? Why am I concerned about security and platform engineering? So I got started in the cloud native space just at the end of 2022. Now, since then, I've worked primarily as developer advocate, but last year I worked as site reliability engineer. And since the beginning of this year, I'm the open source developer advocate at Aqua Security. Now, within that time, I also started my YouTube channel, which you can see here. And I became the CNCF ambassador of the year 2021, which I'm very proud of. And it's a cool title to share. So I have a YouTube channel where I show people how to get started with tools, how to incorporate new tools into their existing workflows, and how maintainers of various platforms and tools can improve the user experience. I also have a weekly DevOps newsletter. Well, at least I try to keep it weekly. So what are our goals when we incorporate security tools into our platform engineering? What do we actually want to do? Well, within platform engineering, we want to enable our engineers to bring software into the hands of users faster. Ultimately, we want to enable engineers to be more efficient, to be more productive at their day-to-day -day job, at their work, at their focus, right? But we don't want to move faster and make our infrastructure and our workloads and our application less secure, right? It has to happen while keeping an eye out for security. How is our, the state of the security within our application, within our workloads and similar? How can we monitor it over time to make sure while we are moving faster, while we are becoming more productive, we keep an eye out on security. So the first problem is when we want to integrate security tools into our platform, to our platform engineering, to enable engineers, who's actually responsible for that? Who's responsible to make that happen? Now, one of the main things that I want to avoid when we're talking about shifting left, incorporating security, enabling engineers, yada, 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 right? <laughs> we want to empower developers, but we don't want to empower developers by giving them more and more stuff to do, right? They already have so much on their plate, right? I don't want to add yet another thing on top that might crush the entire pyramid, right? It's not, it's not gonna happen. We have to be mindful of what our engineers are doing, what our developers are already doing, how can we integrate new processes, security-oriented processes, for example, into the existing workflows, right? So that's one of the focus. So another focus is, well, security, incorporating security tools depends on a variety of different factors that we have to keep an eye out, that we have to consider before we choose a tool, when we're choosing a tool, when we define new workflows, new processes. One is the size of our team. How big is our team? Who can take responsibility? Should everybody take responsibility? Should it be a defined group who's taking responsibility? It highly depends also on the industry that we're working in. Is our industry highly regulated or not, right? If it is, we might want to consult with security professionals who can give us specific advice. 
then it depends on the type of technologies we're already working with. How can we incorporate new tools into those technologies, into those workflows, into those platforms? It depends on our company goals and on our leadership. If security is done bottom up, it will have to follow different strategies than if it's enforced top down. Similarly, we have to consider the budget and the expertise within our team. I used to work at a startup where an intern was responsible for security specific tools. And it worked great. It doesn't mean just because it's difficult to find expertise that you can't focus on security. And then obviously there has to be a budget available. Or if there isn't, well, you have to define other resources. How much time can you allocate to incorporate new tools, right? Can you use open source tools instead of enterprise tools and similar? So the other problem is, what tools can we actually use? There are lots of different security related tools out there, but ultimately it will also depend on these factors, which tool you want to choose. Additionally, security tools depend on these main differences. First of all, the installation. How do you install the tool? Is it a CLI tool? Is it an installation within your Kubernetes cluster? And depending on the way that you install it, if you run it, for example, in your CICD pipeline and similar, different people within your team will have to use the different security tools. Then also, what type of Kubernetes resource is this tool deploying? Is it even deploying and using Kubernetes resources? If everything that you're using is ultimately boils down to a Kubernetes resource, it makes integration between different tools much easier. Otherwise, you might end up having a completely decoupled platform with decoupled processes. Another thing is, what kind of scan coverage does this tool have? What kind of database does it use to make scans happen, to report vulnerabilities? So different tools will have different scan coverage. Then the next thing is the integration. More mature open source tools will have more integrations that are developed by its maintainers, but also by its active thriving community. So you want to take a look at the maturity of the tools and the different integrations that are already available. For instance, Trivi that I'm going to show you in a second has lots of different integrations with your um, existing um, code development tools, such as VS Code to develop your code, right? To develop your software. You can integrate it there as well already and similar. Then the last thing is, who's supposed to use this tool? What is the focus group? Is it the class to admin, engineers? or are those security professionals who are supposed to use these tools? So depending on these factors, you want to use different tools, depending on what matters to you again. What are the factors that matter to you? Now, the last problem is when to use which tool. So this is our development process, our development workflow, right? And as you can see at the beginning, when we are in the development testing stage, before we deploy and observe our application, we can do actually a lot of different security scanning. We can scan our local file system. Whenever we integrate with a third party library, we can scan the library that packages for vulnerabilities that we're using. When we're building our Docker file to build our container images, we can scan our base container images for vulnerabilities. We can then scan our Docker file for misconfigurations. We can then scan our own container images for misconfigurations and vulnerabilities. We can scan our Kubernetes manifest, our infrastructure as code configurations for misconfiguration vulnerabilities, and so on. Now, the main difference here is that what is done on the local engineer developer machine and what is done, for example, in an automated way through CICD pipelines. So for instance, I will do some scanning on my local machine. So I want to use, for instance, maybe a CLI tool, right? Versus if I integrate the tools within my CICD pipeline, I want to have the predefined, for example, actions and workflows for my CICD pipeline available, right? And again, different people will look at those different um, data points. I will, I will look at the vulnerabilities of my own file system, of the own pack the packages that I'm using within my development process. I'm not necessarily going to be the one who's looking at vulnerabilities within the CICD pipeline, right? And similarly, I'm not necessarily going to be the one who's going to look at vulnerabilities and misconfigurations within my Kubernetes cluster. So later on, you will also want to integrate with your existing observability tools. So if something goes horribly wrong, you want it to scream at you. You want your tools to scream at you. You don't want to have to monitor them in a manual fashion. Now I'm proposing for all of this Trivi. Why am I proposing Trivi? Trivi is a highly versatile tool that can be used by various different groups, such as engineers, class admins, security professionals. It has lots of different features. I'm not going to go into detail on all of them. Some of them are listed here. This is just an overview. 
Now, how does it work? How do we use Twiffy? It can be used in three major ways, at least the major ways that I'm using. First, CLI tool, integration in your terminal. Then, CICD pipeline, GitHub action pipeline, right? And the last one is Trivi Kate's operator that's installed within your Kubernetes cluster. So it can do continuous scanning from within your Kubernetes cluster. Now, again, as you can see, each stage will be focused by somebody else within the team. It's not necessarily going to be me who's using Trivi at all of those different components and stages, right? So here's how you can, for example, install it inside of my terminal, the firmware. There are different installation options, lots of different installation options, options available. Now you can also install the Trivi Kate's operator within my Kubernetes cluster through Helm. I'm not going to go into detail, it doesn't matter here. <laughs> so how do we in ultimately integrate a tool such as Trivi within our existing platform engineering, within our existing workflow? So here are the do's that I want to focus on when we do that, right? When we integrate new tools. Utilize existing processes. Don't decouple your processes from everything else, right? Really spend time mapping out your existing workflows and processes. Then integrate with your existing tools. Make that happen. See how new tools can make that happen, can make it easier for you to do that. Because ultimately, you don't want to have a completely decoupled system, decoupled tool that nobody will look at. Then make it visual. People learn things differently. Some people need a huge red button to scream at them. Other people need a pager duty alert at midnight to act, right? People will need different things. Some people need fancy tables and graphs. That's completely okay. Make that happen. See what works for you engineers, what works for your team. If something doesn't work, try something else. Try a different tool, try a different interface, try a different visualization of, for example, your vulnerabilities. And assign ownership. I've worked with so many different startups and the main problem was always the lack of ownership. It's either somebody at the top, whose main owner is it, who's the main owner, and who will have to delegate. So it's not necessarily people, the engineers, who have to take ownership. Similarly, if somebody within the engineering team, the intern has to take ownership, doesn't mean that they are going to be, or like their word is going to be enforced on the wider leadership level, right? So. How do we make the integration happen? I have a little demo prepared with Humana Tech. So here I have my demo app. Now this could be, for example, the demo app of an engineer. This platform is integrated with my JKE Kubernetes cluster. So I have my Kubernetes cluster here. So normal three node cluster, it's nothing fancy, but it's integrated within this platform, meaning I can spin up different environments for different engineers for their testing to do whatever they want to do ultimately without having to give them access to my Kubernetes cluster because ultimately they should only have access to the development platform, for instance, in that case. So as an engineer, I then, for example, have my application over here. It's a simple React application, and this application has a pipeline. Now this pipeline is supposed to build my new container image whenever any updates happen. Here, build the new container image with the new tag, and then it's gonna push it to my registry. My registry, my container registry is in this case, also within Humanitech, within the platform itself. Now, in between, I can then add the Trivi step. Now, what is this step going to do? It's going to check my container image for new high and critical vulnerabilities. And it's going to check for operating system level vulnerabilities and library level vulnerabilities. Now, it's going to ignore all of the unfixed vulnerabilities. I only want to see vulnerabilities that I can already fix, that I can take action against, right, for. So when I run this action, I'm not going to do it now live, but I already ran it. So when I run it, I have here my Trivi output and I can see what's wrong, right? What's wrong within this container? There are two high vulnerabilities that Trivi identified and I can go ahead and I can fix them now because I learned about them. The engineer learned about them. They can fix them depending on where they are within my workflow. And then I can rerun the pipeline and I can redeploy the image load it up to Humanitech and deploy it. And then it's deployed within the cluster. So this is ultimately part of what's part of the engineering workflow. Now, what's happening within our cluster? And this is real quick. So I have here my different namespaces. Here's the namespace with the application. Here the demo app that I just deployed, that the engineer deployed, for instance. And here's the Trivi Kids operator. Now the Trivi Kids operator runs, for example, vulnerability scans of all of the deployments. So you can see all of the vulnerability scans within the cluster. So I can find, for example, here, the demo app vulnerability scan. That's done through Trivi. 
And I can see it has two high vulnerabilities, like shown in the CICD pipeline. Now, the person who's going to look at the in-cluster vulnerabilities, it's like here, is not going to be the one who's also going to be looking at them within the CICD pipeline. It's not going to necessarily be the same person. And this is ultimately how you can incorporate it. Now, I have here my running application just for reference. I can reload it. This is my running application from in the cluster. Now, going back here, demo time. Now, what should you avoid doing? And I kind of referred, referenced that already. Don't expand too quickly. Don't use fancy tools, maybe expensive tools. Really look what works for you and increment really slowly, right? Add new tools slowly. Make sure that you don't have decoupled processes because decoupled processes will add additional time and other resources that need to be invested into managing those processes, managing those tools. And don't make everything the engineer's responsibility. Engineers already have so much to do. So make sure to reduce their workloads and their responsibilities outside of their core work. So the main takeaways of this talk are, again, security tools are part of your existing workflow. You can incorporate them into your existing workflow. It's not difficult as it looks if I can get started with security tools. So can you, and you will experience real long-term benefits. Oh, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have an amazing rest of the conference. Here's my Twitter at Ulysanais. Tweet at me. Tell me what you like about this presentation. Try out Trivi. Let me know what you like. Let us know what you like about Trivi. Let us know if you want to see anything else, any features, any specific workflows, use cases, and so on. Have an amazing day. I hope to see you around. Bye-bye.